Hey there, friends, family, and loved ones all. Well, I'm going to take you back to my days when I got out of this job because there was a trillion dollars in debt in 2007 and people were Robocop signing quarter million dollar loans were idiots who had bad debt. And um, I knew the markets were going to collapse and that was that. And then oil related to food. And so I moved to the country in 2007 because the debt got to one trillion dollars. And the whole game on Wall Street had always been, you know, conservative, save money, loan money to other people, make them level, own you, yada, yada, <clears throat> and yada. Now it's borrowed to your head cave in. It's just electronic transaction. Who gives a flying? So we're looking for a collapse to bring in the central bank digital currency. And here we go. So failed bank information. Where is it? Santa Clara, Silicon Valley. Hmm. You know, and look at the, look at the idiot before the, uh, What's the guy's uh, uh, bank, fried banker man? Is that his name? Whatever. You know, with the, this, the crypto that's made up of thin air. Crypto is nothing, you know. And so here's the bank of Silicon Valley Bank. So now you've got all this venture capitalists. This is their baby, the venture capitalists. I have some friends that work there. I should give them a call. Um, anyway, so the FTC is doing a huge investigation. Now, FTC's got no money. They just can print more, yes. But they can't cover everybody's bank accounts. <laughs> it's not even close. We've all known that. The insurance is a fraud. But here we go. All right. So now this is right on the same day as the next day as Biden's excessive budget plan would hit nearly $51 trillion by 2033. Uh, $31 billion trillion dollar debt. Remember I bugged out at a, tr a trillion. This is over 200 and three, 200 and over three quarters of a million dollars per man, woman, and child. And the, and, the, and the interest rates are going up now, folks. And this is all they're on their money. They all make it. We lose. And this is all everybody to go into the poorhouse really quick. And slave pods, I'll get into another time. So on top of that, um, no one's looking at this, but there's another thing going on. We saw it in the blogs a few weeks ago. Wells Fargo customers, whoops, where'd you go? Wells Fargo customers report missing deposits here. This is March 10th, 2023. Began reaching out to the bank on social media to report recent deposits listed in their account are now missing. What? Everybody's in the same boat, folks. That's the game of electronic world. Everybody's got their money in a false bank. <clears throat> there was a show, a guy did a podcast. Um, he was, uh, I saw him, I don't know, one of them. And, and, and he wanted to get, uh, he wanted to get uh, $240,000 in cash out of the bank. You know, 300000 $300, And um, so he had to apply to the, um, to the uh, um, government, Department of Homeland Security, the IRS. They had to do a special. It took three weeks, four weeks, to finally got him the money. They had an armed security guard escort him to his car to bring him the money, and they only gave him $40,000 in cash. His money. $40,000, that's all they had. There's no money, folks. And that's why they made the coins. Remember when they started with the whole baloney with the COVID? Ovid means sheep in Hebrew, see the sheep. Why did they start off with that? Think about it. Tell you later. It's a tease. All right, so we got Wells Fargo going, same time. Uh, 20 banks sitting on huge potential security costs as uh, Silicon Valley Bank here, and they got a picture of the next rush and shit. Yeah, and the markets are breaking the 200 day and 50 day average on a trend basis on volume. That signifies a big downturn, um, but it's based on artificial air anyway. And it will be, have to be a crash of things to make happen, and then there'll have to be a breach of security to make the, the digital, digital leash of the digital trust ID, uh, verify ID, um, will be everybody's moniker now that they've got their bank statements. And this is the takeover the bank's going on now. This is called rehypothecation too. And rehypothecation is when you're a shareholder of a corporation, which you all are when you sign on to the banks, you give them money. Why do you apply to the banks? Because you're signing on to their corporation. They give you back a promissory note. That's why your name's in capital letters. It's not your money anymore. It's in the corporation. And when they go bankrupt, have problems, they take money out at the bank. They have liquid. They get liquid to satisfy and resolve the cust resolve the banks as best they can to maximize shareholder value. End of story. And there goes your money. 
They'd done it before in Cyprus about eight years ago. They'd done it to Rudolf Steiner, not Rudolf Steiner, uh, Michael Steiner uh, in Wall Street. Big, big shot. They did it to him, too. It showed how it works. <clears throat> this is what's going to happen, too. So what can you do? You can't because everybody's in the same boat. That's the problem with the system. Um, here's another one for you. Oh, March 10th, March 11th. So you see, if you pay attention, a lot of stuff going on. But here's the guts being taken out. And I always said when they get to the markets. Now remember, the federal government funds 40, 30 to 80 percent of all municipalities, all cities, <laughs> all, 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 all banks. I mean, yeah, banks too. Um, but um, the uh, um, states. I mean, all that is funded, and when the feds go down, then, you know, then it's going to be, but they're talking about getting rid of the Social Security Debt Limit Escape Clause they enacted back in 96. That could be an interpreted trust fund to be used not only to pay Social Security. Now, this is right as the baby doomers are, do, are, are about to retire, and this was planned. I remember back in the, in the 95, 96, I was in Wall Street, and they came across and they made this, this law, I'll think of it in a minute, and and they allowed the, the, the corporations that used to be taboo, no way, don't even think about it, to go into your to your to your employees' accounts where their pension money is and they put it in in cash and it's in cash, and you touch it. If you're 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 custodians of it, and there got to be a lot of cash and pension money. So they made the law. It was called, what was the law called? And they and they made it into a that you could write an IOU and they can make it a loan out of that money because the money's there, they'll we'll borrow off it. And ding, they got around it. And that was the end of the pension money being in there for people because they borrowed against it. So when they kept their bankruptcy, everything ends. It's just a corporation. Everything's a corporation, a corpse, root word. So now they're going to get rid of Social Security right as the baby doomers are going. You ain't seen poverty yet. You ain't seen poverty yet. And then out here in California, we're having massive, massive snowfalls. And we're only in March, early March. <clears throat> and the other thing about that is, um, this is uh, Lake Tahoe. And uh, I used to live up there for 15 years in Squallywood, Squaw Valley, no longer Squaw Um And so this snowpack is artificial. As I've gone into YouTube and I've shown you what it's made of. People talk about it's dust and crust or you can't ski very deep. It's just, it's packed in. It's amazing how deep and solid it's just, they can't get on it. And it's amazing. And then, then it just rained up to 6,000 feet, 7,000 feet. And the, and the ski mountain was closed. Squallywood, um, Pacific, uh, Palisades Tahoe was closed because, um, for some of said that, <laughs> was, uh, Squaw Valley was closed because of the rain. <clears throat> and people are dying to go skiing on this stuff. They're hearing about it. It's epic. It's epic. It's epic. You know, but it's not. You see the snow layers. It's heavy. And the sadness about all this is that everybody's talking about right now in March is that um, we got to deal with this place called Lake Orville. And Orville Dam is right downflow out from it. And last time this happened, it flooded out all these people um, that were right below it and uh, threatened it's the dam, the main dam, second largest in California, to protect Sacramento. And if you go back to the 1862 flood, Sacramento was under 10 feet of water, called the, um, oh, here, let me show you this. So heavy rainfall damage, doorbells, dam, main road, and mercy spillways. 100 now these people living downstream had to relocate um, and get out. And, and they couldn't get out, too. And now as we were all worried that there was an earthquake, something was going to happen, and the dam had major problems um, with uh, technology. It broke apart uh, at the time, and we all thought it was going to break, break back then. But now all this water coming out, it's, it's a whole other subject. I cover this in uh, my California book, um, and also, you know, dealing with the California being an island up until around 1810, and there's 600 maps of California being an island in the Stanford Library. Um, and this was the Great Flood of 1862 called the Ark Storm. And uh, Scripps Institute just referred the next Ark Storm was coming uh, a couple of three years ago, back in 2015, when they got the second greatest uh, floods after five years of drought. Uh, I mean, what is winter after five years of drought? 
So here's the Great Flood of 1862. Lying Leland Stanford, the Freemason, had to rule from San Francisco up on Snob Hill um, because there was 10 feet of water. And this, this was storm went for over 43 days. It dumped 10 feet of water over a three period of 43 days. Park storm. So there's your barometer soup right there. And uh, this is down the road. I was just sending it out to friends from where I lived when I was up there. And I remember this because they had a helicopter and food to some people. Um, but it turned out being okay. But this was the snow plows. They didn't have enough. The snow throwers couldn't go up and over. They weren't built that way. They were, they were just mud to throw it over the side like eight feet max. So this stuff would be on. So they had to cut it, cut it, cut it. Um, but anyway, I remember those pictures back then up in Lake Tahoe.